finally, after asking for so long for a standard to be created for PC monitors for their HDR support, so that we didn't have to deal with the endless claims of HDR support where in fact there was only partial support, which really means there's no support at all, you can't have some support of HDR, you either have it or you don't, Vesa of all people have taken up the slack to sort out this grey area. And whilst I'm damned happy someone made a move to do this, I'm not pleased with how they did it because this specification has three tiers and three tiers for supporting a technical standard is ridiculous. Once again, you either hit the standard or you don't. I don't agree with the idea that you can kind of hit requirements but not totally hit them, yet still be allowed to call it HDR supported, and I'm not alone on this. There is a fantastic article on TFT Central which highlights this idea as well. By the way, you should absolutely check out the full article on the TFT website, which I'll link down below. They do superb coverage of PC monitors. So starting with tier 1, Display HDR 400. This simply shouldn't even be a tier. How this even made it beyond a discussion point and actually became real, I'm shocked. It provides essentially no noticeable increase over standard monitors that you can already buy, toting basically none of the true HDR features you would expect from the new technology. For one, with only 8-bit color required, it's not even hitting the true minimum level of HDR 10-bit color support. Dolby Vision is the next HDR standard step up and supports 12-bit color, but that's not seen such widespread support yet. So how 8-bit colour is allowed to be part of a HDR certification blows my mind. Furthermore, the 400 tier can use global dimming methods instead of local dimming zones. Simply put, global dimming is the lighting of the whole panel with a single source, but HDR uses preferably hundreds of dimming zones, at best full array local dimming, to allow a panel to light up every specific section of the screen in order to get those gorgeous colours and contrast ratios just right. Current monitors pretty much all use global dimming, and HDR is supposed to be using large arrays of dimming zones, so once again, how can global dimming be allowed in this certification? Of course though, the most obvious offence is the pitiful brightness requirements of 400 nits, hence the name. My Predator X34 can reach 300 nits already, and it's definitely no insane standout in terms of image quality. Going to 400 is a near unnoticeable increase. HDR content sits at over 1000 nits, so the display HDR 400 standard level would have you get a 33% increase, whereas you should be getting closer to a 233% increase. Which do you think would actually show HDR content correctly? It's ridiculous. Colour gamut for HDR content in the TV Ultra HD Premium certification, something I've talked about before if you've missed that, that sits at DCI-P3 support, and even looks to increase to a standard called BT2020 in the future, which HDR content is already using as a container as it's seen as probably future proof as it covers about 76% of the colours the human eye can see as opposed to the 54% of DCI-P3. Standard screens like my Predator X34 currently show about 95% of the sRGB colour space, a standard that can only show 35% of colours the human eye can see. So why am I shocked? Well, because the display HDR400 standard requires 95% of the ITUR BT709 colour space, which as it turns out, is essentially the same as 95% of the sRGB colour space. So this display HDR400 level standard only looks to require a massive, roughly 0% increase in the colour gamut of your screen, where in reality it should be at least a 25% increase in colour gamut support, with preferably much higher support coming. For contrast ratio, they require a 4000 to 1 level minimum, but HDR content once again makes this look like a joke as it provides a content minimum detail for 20,000 to 1, over 5 times the disparity, and that's on the lowest value, yet this has been called a legitimate HDR standard to meet. Sorry, but this is mind blowing. Anyway, let's push on to the middle tier, level 600, surely things can be better. Well no, in my opinion they aren't. Back to my same point, you either can fully display the HDR content be provided or you can't. It shouldn't be seen as acceptable to tell people you are supporting a standard when in reality you're only supporting some of it and your get out of jail free card is oh but they should have read the table of specs. People don't have time to read this stuff. 
It took me damn ages to work out all the different specifications and their meanings and how to compare one to another and even now I still get confused and need time to work things out. And this is coming from someone who loves all this technology. The average consumer has zero idea about any of these specifications. So back on track, the 600T obviously has a better colour brightness, but still fails to hit the 1000 nits, which again, isn't HDR support in my book. It's only better than the 400 tier level support. The panel color bit support only needs to be 8 bit plus FRC to make it up to 10 bit color, but the use of FRC technology is essentially bullshitting your way through the final hurdle. It's not true 10 bit color support. I touched on this on a previous video about a PC monitor I covered a while ago, and yeah, it just really annoys me because it's saying a panel has 10 bit color support when it really doesn't have genuine support. Now, at least minimum color gamut is now 90% of the DCI P3 color space, which is closer, still not 100%, but closer to the full support seen in the Ultra HD Premium certification. But again, you aren't going to be seeing the proper color of the HDR content you purchased, even though you're being told your monitor has HDR support. And finally, contrast ratios only need to hit a 6000 to 1 tier, still over 3 times short of the Ultra HD Premium certification level. Basically, this 600 tier still falls well behind true HDR support. But here comes the big blow to me. The final tier isn't even a good top tier. You're supposed to have a top tier that pushes manufacturers to try and meet a perfect top level, but this cops completely out of it. It doesn't even provide serious enough HDR support requirements to match the TV market's Ultra HD Premium certification. What? I'll point to the good bits first. At least contrast ratios need to meet the 20,000 to 1 level finally, and brightness obviously needs to hit that 1000 nit peak, but the colour bit support can still use the shitty method of 8 bit plus FRC instead of being true 10 bit technology if the manufacturer likes. Only 90% of the DCI P3 colour space needs to be covered, that's no increase over the 600 tier. I I'm simply lost for words, this is a terrible terrible certification. It will only lead to confusion and the belief that you have HDR support when you don't, and it doesn't even provide a platform for manufacturers to show off amazing HDR support because there is no top tier that actually pushes the boundaries of support in any real way whatsoever. I'm properly annoyed by this. Now, I know some people might be like, oh, these are minimum requirements for monitor manufacturers to hit. They can go above and beyond. Well, yes, they can, but they won't unless they're shooting for the top tier anyway. Any monitor falling in between is just going to barely scrape the requirements so they can stick it on the box and make the monitor appear better. And like I said, why would a manufacturer go above and beyond the top tier when there is nothing to easily show a consumer that they have done so? Their effort would just go unnoticed by all but a tiny niche who understand the specs intimately. Now, it does seem that these specifications are open to change in 2018, so maybe all is not lost, but right now, I'm unable to support this. I'm hoping NVIDIA and their HDR G-Sync can save things. It really does amaze me that even after the creation of a specification like the Ultra HD standard for TVs, that a company shows such a lack of understanding of what HDR support should be, and how their failed attempt could really damage the PC HDR monitor market. Also, I should point out, I've only touched on the main, like, mainstream points that we all sort of understand, like contrast ratio and color gamut. There are a lot of other points that were hit in their full breakdown, and you can read that full breakdown link down below, as well as all the other important links that you should just read through. But yeah, I'll keep you guys up to date with things and my thoughts on them, and of course, let me know what you guys think down below, as I'm always very interested to know, especially with a topic such as this, what you're thinking. And remember, for anything 21 by 9 or tech related, then head over to my channel page or the WAF website and I'm sure there'll be something of interest there. If not, then leave a comment down below with what you'd like to see and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.